Welcome to the Luxuriously Fierce Podcast. I'm May, intuitive writer, speaker, and founder of the luxury journaling brand, Luxuriously Fierce. My mission is to guide you in coming back to your natural state of luxury. Step into the power of luxury journaling to unload what no longer serves you, unlock subconscious programming, and awaken passion and purpose. Becoming Luxuriously Fierce is a movement. It is for the woman who is ready to listen to the whispers of her soul, to tap into the ancient wisdom she came here with. It is for the woman who is ready to be bold, step into her feminine power, and lead herself to luxury. It is for the woman who is ready to let go of the subconscious programming that no longer serves her, align with her passion, and become her truest self. You are made for big things. You are made to be bold. You are made for luxury. Are you ready? Welcome back to another episode of the Luxuriously Fierce Podcast. I am so excited to be sitting down with Lainey Dent today. Lainey is a registered nurse, a certified nurse coach, and a women's life empowerment coach. She helps women tap into their unique gifts and inner power to stop playing by the rules and start living a life by aligned design. Her one-on-one mentorship combines mindset, embodiment, and soul work to create the holistic inner to outer transformation that allows her clients to bring that next level self to life. So basically, you're just like an all-around amazing healer and coach and person. (laughs) That was so nice to say. Thank you. Is what I just gathered from that. Like, because you have done, you've done so much, so much, and I want to hear all about it. So, first of all, welcome to the show. I'm so excited that you're here. And here, tell tell us, like, how did that happen? You went from nursing to nursing coach to empowerment coach, and so I want to know all the things. Tell us about your business and about you and how you got from where you were to where you are now. Oh girl, I was like an open invitation for me to chat it up. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Chat it up. That's what we're here for. Yes. All right. So, um, long story long, I, (laughs) (laughs) so I started off as a nurse, but I feel like it's really important to kind of explain why I went into nursing and how I got here. So I feel like my life was basically, from the time of childhood, having like a bunch, not to get like too emotional, like right off the bat, like um, just having like a lot of daddy issues. And then that kind of like transitioning into like being bullied as a kid. And then just being the rebellious teenager, like dealing with like all those childhood issues and just not really living for myself. Like as soon as I was like a teenager, a lot out of the house, I feel like I really just allowed everyone else to dictate my life because I was like looking for that love and validation that I didn't get at home. And don't get me wrong, like my parents are amazing people, but like, you know, they did what they did to give me the best life possible. But what it translated into was like, dad wasn't home a lot. And Lainey didn't understand that as a child. And I feel like a lot of people can relate. Like we have these events happen as kids and we internalize it and we don't realize like how it's played out like so much our entire lives. So Yeah. So basically I went into nursing because I wanted to be accepted by other people. It was, you know, I mean, especially this past year, like healthcare heroes, like everyone loves, loves a nurse and men, I, as embarrassing as this is to say, but I'm going to own it. Like men love nurses. Like that was my pickup line for like the longest time. Like I'm a nurse, like, like hook, line and sinker. As soon as you say that to a man, they're like sold. They're like, oh my God, a nurse, like how hot. (laughs) <laughs> it's the truth though so, <laughs> luckily that's how, not how is that, you're married right is that how you got your husband <laughs> he's a nurse too so it didn't work on him <laughs> yeah I was just gonna say it didn't work on him because he's like I'm also a nurse so I know that you like do a lot of gross things use that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so he wasn't too impressed um but like for other guys like that was my pickup line and Um, it wasn't until that I met my husband, like, I feel like he was like my spirit team, like going all in. They like dropped this perfect little, well, he's not perfect, but they dropped this handsome man into my lap. And he was like, oh, we should try, like, we should try hiking. We should try camping. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, no, like I don't do any of those things, but this is the first time that I realized that like, I will 
not anymore, but I was saying yes to everything for the fear of like being alone, being rejected. And luckily this was the one time that it really worked out to my advantage. So my husband came into my life. He was like, we should try all these things. And I was like, yes, hell yes. Like this hot guy wants to take me camping. Like who am I to tell him that I (laughs) barely know how to walk in a straight line sober. So like, I'm like, all right, let's, let's, you know, let's try it out. And I I fell in love but like the part that I fell in love with like not just him but I fell in love with getting outside of my comfort zone and that was like the first time that I'd ever done that so that was kind of the spark that led to me exploring other things like um trying like a home workout program I won't drop the name on here but like doing like the whole like multi-level marketing like because I was like starting to get into like my health and my fitness introduced me to the world of coaching, which introduced me to the world of mindset. And up until this point, we're saying 24 years old, I literally had no idea that like you could change the way you thought. Like I grew up like, this is the way you do it. You get the really good job. You get the benefits. You have the 401k, the savings, the health benefits, and you get married and you stay within 10 minutes from where your parents are. Like I grew up in a very like Italian household in Philadelphia and this was the first time I was like wait come again like you're trying to tell me that like my belief systems are the reason that my life is like playing out this way so that was like my first introduction into coaching and it felt like it was like ah, like it was like a light like at the end of the tunnel and I was like oh my god like maybe I don't need to be a nurse and that is so sad I always get so sad when I share that with people because nursing is an amazing career and I do believe that I was always meant to help people and nursing was what I thought was the acceptable way to do that but then I got introduced to coaching and I was like holy crap like I can help people in a completely different capacity and it had a start with me so I got introduced to mindset and then branched out from like the fitness and like health coaching into empowerment coaching because this was a really long story long. I apologize. <laughs> Not at all. I love long stories. So um, I branched out into empowerment coaching because I realized like I wasn't seeing the success in the coaching business that I wanted to right off the bat. And I felt like, you know, like when you first learn about mindset and you're like, oh, if I believe that this is what's going to happen, like it's all going to work out. And like, you think it's like as simple as that, like as simple as like, reciting an affirmation and like boom like the universe just responds and like you're a millionaire I feel like that's how a lot of entrepreneurs like get started especially like in this industry you kind of just feel like everything's going to fall into place and it did not and the reason it did not fall into place right off the bat is because I stepped into coaching from an empowered place but once I got into coaching I fell back into the disempowered laney that I had always been my entire life where I was comparing myself to other coaches on the internet. I was just following what my upline and my multi-level marketing was telling me to do. I was showing up like as a robot, just like, yes, ma'am, yes, yes, yes. Like doing everything that everyone was telling me all over again, just in a new, in a new playing field. So it took me a while to realize like, hey, you're repeating the same patterns. Like you've just like transitioned like where your beliefs are showing up now. And it wasn't until I got really, really honest with myself and really did like the deep healing work that I realized that my story and everything that's led me here like happened for a reason and I'm better off for it. And now I get to help women deal with that and own their story and be their own hype girl and really look at their lives as from a place of empowerment and not like a place of sadness. Oh, I wish I would have done this sooner, but like it's happening absolutely the way it needs to be. And I truly believe that I went through all those different phases of my life, had all those experiences, relationships, so that I can better serve other women going forward. But yeah, so that was my long story long, how I got to empowerment coaching from nursing, but I hope that made sense. That's the first time I've ever heard long story long, but I love it. I think I'm going to start, I'm going to start using that. Long story long. That's that's definitely me. And that's me telling a story is like, it has like, there's the story and then there's like the pre-story and then there's like the little after story. There's all these different layers. So but many layers. <laughs> I love this zoomed out perspective that you just gave, though, that in this place that you're in now, you can see how all of these things that you've done in your life have brought you to this space. And I feel like that's so important because we're, we, as a society, we are so zoomed in. We are so far zoomed in that we see nothing. 
Yeah. We don't see how any of these things are happening for us. We don't see how these things are leading us to where we are supposed to be or where we're meant to be. And the the thing that just stood out to me the most that you just said was, you mean my beliefs are dictating my life? Yeah, that was news to me. I was like, you mean that's not the absolute truth? Like, it's set in stone? Like, God did really come nothing. down and like say this is how it is? Like, I was mind blown. <laughs> it's so true though, because we don't, we don't have a lot of kind of mastery over our beliefs until you, you don't have any mastery over your beliefs until you realize that your beliefs are dictating your life because everything that you learn, like the beliefs that you hold, they come to you in childhood, right? They come to you in your environment. They're told to you by other people. And we really, we don't really learn to think for ourselves. We don't recognize that we're not empowered to hold our own beliefs. Yeah. And it's just crazy that it took me like two times learning that lesson before it like stuck. So I think that that's also like a powerful message to share with everyone is that it's okay if it like doesn't click right away. It's okay if you have to like learn the same lessons over and over until it sticks. But I, cause I literally walked from one stage of my life being so disempowered to another stage being so disempowered, but with a really pretty facade on the outside. Like I was like a fitness coach. I was in great shape, but I was also just very like you know, like it was just a new set of beliefs that I had taken upon myself and just letting them dictate my life. So it's, it's tricky. Beliefs are tricky. Fear is tricky. And the way it shows up, like it was the same story playing out in like multiple different ways, like this fear of not being enough. And it just, it wasn't until I like really got honest with myself and really confronted myself. Like, why do you believe this to be true is when I started seeing the the transition in my life. So yeah. That's so powerful because really, like, 95% of our thoughts on a day-to-day basis are unconscious, right? And so all of those unconscious thoughts, those unconscious beliefs that you have, they are leading your life. And when you are able to zoom out and to look at those beliefs and, like you just said, say to yourself, why do I believe this? where did this come from? That is when empowerment comes, comes out, it comes up, right? Stepping into your power and empowerment is a really, is a really hard thing to do because there's so much going against you in this world. And there's so much going against you, like your ego is popping up. I was Mm -hmm. just reminded yesterday, I was doing a really powerful like meditation shadow work with my coach. And during the meditation, my phone rang and like nobody ever calls me and it was like do people call each other anymore I don't know don't have to get me started I'm actually like a call person I'm like the mom that like when you text them like she calls you back instead like so like I can't relate but no it's so funny go ahead but my phone started ringing a phone call from like South Dakota I'm Canadian and I don't know anybody in South Dakota so I like I never answered the phone but as soon as that phone call stopped ringing my like a podcast that I hadn't listened to in a few days started playing it was just so like so random and we were just laughing because like like you said the fear and the ego it just pops up anyway and it's so it's so powerful and just how it comes out and is trying to keep you in that place of disempowerment yeah, it's crafty. I feel like it, the more you progress, it's like the more work you do, the sneakier your ego gets because they're like, oh shit, like here she goes again. She's going to try to do something <laughs> scary. Like we have to get this, this bitch. Like, uh-uh. It's like, so it gets, gets craftier and craftier. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's wild. But you said something like, you know, just like zooming out and looking at your life. And I think that like, we can either zoom out and look at our lives and like beat ourselves up about like the way things turned out or like where we are or we can like zoom out and be like holy shit like this is just one blip like on the major scale of like all the amazing things that we have accomplished too so it's just what's the perspective that you're zooming out and looking at your life and just I think one of the greatest lessons I've like learned in this journey is that everything like like I'm repeating myself but everything happened 
for a reason, like to lead me here. And it's made me who I am. Like I wouldn't be the coach that I am today if I didn't have like all these hiccups. And I think it's like so powerful, like to think that like, okay, like I have such a purpose, like everything is happening for me, not to me. And if we show up in, in that energy, like every day, like our days are completely different. So perspective, like overall is also like just so key to moving forward. Perspective is like, is the ultimate game changer. Yes. Like when you look at the truths that you hold, the beliefs that you hold, and, you know, maybe somebody says something that kind of goes against those truths or gives a a different perspective on those truths. And you kind of start to shift, like you start to open yourself a little bit up, up, up a little bit more to other perspectives, to outside perspectives and use that as a way to like sit in that and be able to recognize whether or not that resonates with you, if it aligns with you, that perspective is the thing that can help you shift your beliefs. Because some of the beliefs that you hold are true and they're meant for you and they're aligned with the person that you are and where you're going in the future, where you desire to go in the future and what you desire to call into your life most of your beliefs don't (laughs) most of them are going to keep you where you are and being able to to look at those other perspectives and go oh okay so this is my belief this is what i know to be true but here is this other person or these other people and they have a different belief And what if I believed that? Yeah. And take the shift. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's incredible. Like, I mean, and that's the thing we have so much evidence, you know, to disprove like all of our limiting beliefs. We just don't take the, we don't take the time to like look at it that way. I think that's like so important to like point it out. Like we're so stuck in this mentality that it's, you know, success is hard and money is hard, but like there are millions of people doing it. Like we have so much evidence to go against it. And it's like, we just rather like stay stuck because I think that the really big piece about belief systems is like, what are the false benefits of keeping these beliefs? You know, there's like a positive side, a false positive side to having these like beliefs that keep us stuck because they protect us from being unseen and from getting hurt and being criticized and being vulnerable. So again, perspective. <laughs> like perspective. That's such a powerful take on it though, because we really do, we have this fear and now I'm like trying not to go off on a tangent because now I'm like, where does this fear come from? Um, we have this like, here for long of... story long, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn for the long story long. Turn long story long. We have yeah. this fear of being seen and being heard and being seen as weird and you know going against the grain and being vulnerable and talking about things that we're passionate about we're afraid of getting like mean comments on the internet and all of this stuff and it's just like why (laughs) yeah why what's the worst case scenario like it and and i think that's like another piece of it too is like what do you have to lose? But like, what do you have to gain? You know, like, okay, maybe someone says something mean about you, but maybe you change someone's world by like putting that post up. So, you know, it's again, it's, I feel like perspective is like the biggest piece. It's just like, how do you look at the, your overall life? And like, what is the impact you want to make? And are you willing to maybe get a little uncomfortable to make a million other people feel more comfortable in their skin? And it's just, it's following your purpose and your mission and like just having those absolute truths and like, yeah, the fear is going to keep coming up, but there's, there are truths that are so much louder. So it's like your truths have to be louder than your fears and your why has to be louder than your fears. And I think that that's key in, in the work that we do. I love that. I love that quote that you just said. Our why's has to have to be bigger than our fears our truth has to be bigger than our fears that's so powerful and it's so important and I think that with that perspective comes the empowerment like when you are able to put yourself out there and be vulnerable and speak your truth and 
follow your passion and then you know someone disagrees with what you're saying or they leave a mean comment on your on your Instagram or maybe a family member comes up you know and is trying to talk you down or whatever it might be the empowerment comes from being able to recognize like okay this is where that person is on their journey but I don't need to be with them on their journey like this is mine this is where they are and this is where I am we're not in the same space and that's okay yeah that is also like a big piece of empowerment it's like knowing when to separate yourself from other people's shit like you can only own your own shit like you have to like shift if it ain't your shit like you can only control like how you react and respond. And I think that was like the biggest piece is that like, I didn't need to be everyone's favorite person on the internet. Like I didn't need to be like a viral, like 30,000 likes on like a picture. Like, even though that stuff is like great. And like, obviously I want to make a massive impact in this world, but at the end of the day, like what is my why? And the why comes from a place of service and it's releasing the fact that your impact is like equated to like likes and your impact is like equated to like how many views your reels get, you know, not everyone is going to be your person. And that's absolutely perfect because there's another coach out there that they're meant to work with, you know, just the, having that abundance mindset. And I think that that is a big key to empowerment and to your brand as well is like knowing that there's no shortage of abundance in this world there's no shortage of our desires in this world and we get to have it all um and share it with the people that we're meant to be sharing it with and i think that that's that's empowerment in a nutshell right there that's just so there's so many layers to empowerment (laughs) oh my god empowerment (laughs) is the onion it is the onion it is such an onion the thing that just came up for me is when you said that um when you get to share your passion to share your gifts um with people with people in the world and like yeah of course we want to make a big impact but impacting one person is a massive ripple effect right powerful collective is made up of powerful individuals so you start with yourself you start and then you move on to one more person and then two more people and it snowballs right yeah um and inside of that what just came up for me was the people that you meet when you stand in your place of power when you stand in your fully empowered being it's scary to put yourself out there and be vulnerable and there's this big fear of losing, losing people that you're close with if maybe they don't have the same views as you or they don't share your passion, um, you know, losing kind of pieces of yourself, the pieces that are not meant to go with you on this next leg of your journey. And all of that can be true when you start to embody your truest being and when you start to step into your power and embrace your unique gifts and and um use your inner power to live in an from an aligned place yeah the people that you meet on that journey that sisterhood that gets created is beyond in my experience and i'm sure you can relate to this it's beyond anything that i could have ever imagined um it was really the thing that I craved when I started on this journey myself because it's hard to go at it alone yeah it is and I feel like we all have this deep rooted like sisterhood like wound from like you know from like childhood especially me like being bullied like I I feel like I always showed up in friendships almost like not not 100% myself like I put on the camouflage I put on the armor like before I even went into a situation in like pre like just prepared that someone was going to judge me if I showed up fully as myself so like it kind of cut me off from like having like really genuine friendships and then like when I showed up in this coaching world it was like the first time that I was like this is like all of me take it or leave it and then you find these sisters and it's it's so empowering. And I had a thought when you were speaking, like, yeah, there's going to be people that aren't for you and like, aren't going to resonate with what you say. But like, I think that there's still an impact in that because even if like, we're making other people think, even if they're not resonating with our message, I think it's so powerful to realize that like, 
the fact that they're not resonating it is meaning that they're like taking it in and absorbing it and being like, that's not my truth. So like, I think that's another, again, perspective, like, yeah, not everyone's going to be your people, but it's also really beautiful and you're empowering those people that aren't your people to find their own people. That was a lot of people in one sentence, but (laughs) I think you like got what I was trying to say. And something else that came up for me is that we're so caught up again, these days, like with like numbers and like likes and like whatever. And it's like, when did we like lose sight? Like one person is like a massive impact. And if you would have told like little Lainey, like on the playground that you're going to make someone's day today, you're going to make them feel really good about themselves. Like that one person would have been enough. And it's just like the society that we've again, been programmed in that, like you want the numbers, but like at a human level, that one person like means everything you know like that is enough like deep down so I think that that's really powerful to point out like you said but yeah the sisterhood was definitely the one thing I did not expect but was so happy to get out of this world knowing that like there are people out there that are like that are like me that enjoy the same things that I like that I can be fully myself around and that's like the beauty of the internet and social media is that like yeah there's like the haters but there's also like a tribe that you form and like your people you know I'm closer to some people online than I am to like some people in real life you know yes people you've never met never in, met in yeah. person yeah <laughs> I know I'm the same way because really like on a human level all we want is connection right we want that connection and I think that we are very um programmed and we're very stuck on making a connection that isn't a real connection like when you start to Mm -hmm. embody your truest self and you start to hone your unique gifts and step into this empowered place and people kind of start to fall away from you we get scared and we make ourselves think, okay, I'm not changing. I'm building connect. I'm keeping my connection with this person. Mm -hmm. When really that's not what's happening at all. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But we just, we deep down, we all want connection. That's a very extremely basic human need, Mm -hmm. right? Love that connection, that acceptance. Yeah. And I think it's like to to get woo woo. Like, I mean, we all truly are like one, there is like a deep, like universal connection that we all have with each other. And it's just kind of like, it's not a becoming connected. It's like kind of like an unbecoming. And I think of this, like in my own personal journey too, like, it's not more like a becoming who I'm meant to be, but like an unbecoming of like all the lies that we've like picked up, like an unbecoming of like all the fears and like the you know, like the separation that like we as humans have created like in this lifetime. And it's like, when we peel back the layers, like it is, we just want to be connected. We want to have people to hold us and like keep us safe and like to build community with. And it's, it's so beautiful that we have a platform that we can do that and to come from an empowered place and know that there are people out there for you, you know, like if you show up fully, like there are people that are going to accept you fully as well. That's so, I just love it so much. <laughs> I love these, this conversation about empowerment. I think we need to back this train up a little bit, though. Yes, like, yes. Because like it. you said, empowerment is an onion. Like, literally, there are so many paths that we could take this conversation right now. I know. I, I... Such... It's a freaking ocean. Like the it's, depths are unknown. So small, okay. <laughs> it's so big. I know it, it, it is, but like that's why I think it's like, I think it's something that just like has resonated with me so much, and that's why I choose to like label myself as an empowerment coach because at the core of like everything that like that's what we want. We want to show up in our truth and in our power and be accepted in every facet of our lives for doing so. Like that's what it means to me like to truly be empowered is to show up in your truth to be empowered is to show up fully as you so and in in every aspect and all in the ocean of empowerment <laughs> I was literally just going to ask you if you would say what empowerment means to you and like how that shows up for you in your life and how does that show up um like in your coaching if someone comes to you and says like I'm just feeling really disempowered yeah. where do I start with this like what 
how do you move someone from a disempowered to an empowered state or help them recognize that they're already an empowered being they just need to Mm -hmm. grab hold of that power and stop giving yeah because that's the truth yeah because we're not broken we're not like looking to be fixed like we're all perfect like in our own regard like with stories that have just unfolded differently and I think that that's one of the things is like one of the first things that I do with a client is like tell me about you like what is your story I want to get to know you and your story because for the longest time I thought that I had to hide my past and hide the things that I've done like I'm a shameful horrible slutty human and like god forbid like if my husband found out any of this stuff like I'm not worthy of his love I'm not worthy to be a coach like I used to be a mess but like that's part of our story like own it own it own it own it own it we don't have to stay there but like how can we like move from that place like I didn't like who I was because I wasn't showing up as myself and just think if I showed up as myself like here I am. Does that make sense? I don't know if that made answered your question, but I think the first part of like becoming an empowered human is really just looking at yourself honestly and saying like, this is, this is my life. This is my story. How can I move forward? What, what are my values and how do I show up from that place? It's all just like standing in your truth, knowing that you're worthy in this moment. And I think a big piece of why people don't believe to be empowered and don't believe they're worthy is because of their past. So if we can release the shame, if we could just start with like a blank slate, or if we can just look at that, look at that lens, like our past through a lens of like love and compassion, because look at it the way you would look at like your best friends, like past, you wouldn't like say like, oh, you're a freaking terrible human. Like, I can't believe you did that. (laughs) Stuff. like you wouldn't do that like if it was your daughter or your best friend or your mother you wouldn't look at your life so why do we choose to speak to ourselves that way you know a lot of people think like well society is taking our power away like no we give our power away because we fall victim to this shame and the guilt of our past so I think one of the biggest pieces of empowerment is that it comes from within like no one's gonna make you empower it as your coach I'm not gonna give you your power back like no you have to claim that power back and part of claiming that power back is looking at your life through an objective lens and like okay like I'm I'm not too happy with the way I handled that situation but how can I go forward and grow and handle that situation a little bit better knowing what I know now like how can I move forward because it's a journey it's not like a one-stop like all right, here you are. You're empowered. You graduated. (laughs) Like, I don't even believe I'm fully an empowered person because it's a journey. Like the fears are always going to come back up there. There's always going to be obstacles and things that are going to come up and creep in. And it's just, how can you come from an empowered place by owning your story, owning what you know, now standing in your truth and showing up from that light. And if that's the place you're showing up, then like, that's all you can do. Like that's, yeah. I hope that made sense. And I hope that answered your question that it's it, another it long makes- story long. <laughs> <laughs> it makes perfect sense. And it, I love it. It speaks to me because I know that when I started on this journey of empowerment and, you know, honing my intuitive gifts and my passions and what I'm here to share with the world, I very, on some level, I don't think this was conscious at the time, but I definitely believed that I could just become an empowered person moving Mm -hmm. forward, right? Moving forward, I could be an empowered person. And of course you can, but you cannot do that without looking at your past. You just cannot. And that's, for me, um, this is like all from a personal experience. So take what resonates, leave the rest. But for me, I couldn't be that empowered person because I was still repeating patterns that I had learned in my past, right? And so after, you know, going, moving through a program with a coach, you know, learning to understand my energy and how to work with that energy and learning how to step into my passion and not even learning how to step into my passion, but giving myself, creating that confidence to, to do that and to go for it. There were still all these blocks and I couldn't figure out what what they were or where they were coming from 
And it wasn't until I worked with my next coach, who was a shadow work coach, that was Danielle Massey, who you just spoke at her uh, uh, Selfish Philly program. Girl, shadow shout out to Danielle. Yes. Um, so when I started working with Danielle, all of these like patterns and beliefs that I had learned in childhood and had carried with me, they were holding me back from being this empowered person, mm -hmm. right? And so... I love what you just said because it, it really does speak to me because I, and I feel like a lot of people desire this. <laughs> they want to be able to move forward into their future with empowerment yeah. without having to go back and quote unquote relive the past, right? And it's not about reliving the past. It's about recognizing the patterns that can't come with you any further. Yes. Right? Oh my that God. Move, that, that are not going to move you forward. They can't come with you. Yes. I, I actually, speaking at Danielle Massey's event, I said something, <laughs> I thought this was so funny. Maybe it's not as funny, but <laughs> I said, I was like staying stuck in the past is like getting ready for a concert during COVID. Like it's canceled. That's not the point of like this work. The point of this work is like owning it, like owning like the patterns and moving forward, like taking that fear and grabbing her hand and like walking into the sunset together you know like knowing that for you to be empowered you have to be completely 100 percent all of you and all of you is worthy and I think that that's the biggest piece like I stepped into this journey and I was trying to show up as what I thought would make me worthy of the success mm -hmm. but what makes you worthy of the success is being who you are and being fully you and you see that in the women that are successful in this industry, like they are all unique and they stand in their power and they own their shit. Like no one wants someone that's completely perfect and never has fucked up. At least I don't want to work with anyone that's never, because it's that's not relatable. Not yeah. yeah it's, it's not relatable. You can't have never made a mistake. ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think it's like, it's, it's what makes us human. Like, again, like empowerment isn't like a place to get to. It's like an ongoing journey. You know, it's just like healing is not like a destination. Like you're not just like one day, like, and like, you know, I'm an ascended master now I'm completely healed. Like, no, like, I mean, that's not, that's not what's going to happen. It's going to be a constant journey of unbecoming all the the lies and the fears you picked up along and stepping even further into your truth and like who you are at your core, which is love. That got very woo woo there. Sorry. Um, oh, I like love that. the woo. Bring the woo. But, but yeah, like, and it's, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. We have to own our shadows and <laughs> unfortunately there's more shadows than just in this, in this lifetime that like can, can creep up. But I think that that's like the beauty. And I think getting to know ourselves, even like the darker sides can be so beautiful and so empowering, like in and of itself. Um, there's, I don't know, I can't explain it, but there's like this certain feeling that you get, like when you, you really dive in, like you, you end up being more compassionate and loving towards yourself. Like, wow, you've been through some shit and look at you, like you're still standing today. Like you're a badass. And I think if you look at your past from that standpoint, like that's a lot different than beating yourself up from it. You're like, holy shit, you're, you showed up today. Like you're a fucking badass. So much more empowering than beating yourself up. Yeah. The thing that just, I just had this download of like, when I was, when I was doing shadow work, some of the shadows that came up were not actually like fear-based or trauma-based or, you know, related to any kind of pain. There was one in particular, a shadow that came up that was, a happy moment. Like I, I was very confused and I said, like, I remember that moment as being very happy. And then I'm Claire audience. So I hear messages from my guides and I heard in my head, yes, but that's the moment that you let your boundary down. So it was mm. a happy moment, but it was a moment where I dropped a boundary that I had put there and then just let it go. And what I just heard now is that empowerment isn't always feeling powerful, right? It's not always this energy of like confidence and you walk into a room and everybody turns and looks at you right empowerment is owning your energy owning yeah. your being owning your past owning your shadows owning your fears and your pain and your trauma and your beliefs and pat and the experiences everything girl you are speak talk dirty to me <laughs> 
my language like ooh. well I mean and that's like how I developed the hype girl method like it literally stands for like honor your personal experiences energy and emotions to that. step into growth inspired action radical self-love and limitless living but like that's how I came from because it is like like you said like I actually just created a reel about this but like empowerment coaching like people think they're gonna like come into my space and you're just gonna be like I'm the baddest bitch like fuck with me but like no like that's not what it's about it's being like I'm the realest person like this is who I am take it or leave it like I'm a work in progress but I'm owning it like showing up authentically but it's not it's not just yes confidence is obviously a piece that comes when you are doing like empowerment work but it's not it's not the whole thing it's not just feeling like a badass bitch but it's like knowing deep down you are a badass bitch because of everything that you've been through if that makes sense (laughs) total sense I love it I yeah. love it ah. let's talk about this hype girl method oh girl so <laughs> sitting down and talking with Lainey was absolutely amazing it was so good we had to split this episode into two parts so make sure you stay tuned and come back for part two of this conversation with Lainey Denny